Hello, my name is Matthew Mercer. I'm a voice actor and the Dungeon Master for Critical Role here on Geek and & Sundry, and welcome to today's episode of GM Tips. Today's theme, getting your players to engage in more role-playing. Now, I want to preface this with the idea that you cannot force your players to role-play. Some just may not be comfortable with it. Some may not be into this game for heavy RP and instead well, more of a Diablo-like kill should take loot experience. And that's totally fine, it's totally great. A little worrying, but totally great. However, you can certainly engage them with some of the following tips, and you may be surprised which elements they pick up and end up liking. My first recommendation is to talk to your group in advance about wanting to actually RP more in the campaign. You don't want them being caught off guard with an aggressive change in GMing style that asks more of them. It puts them in a weird, awkward place where they feel like they have to perform more for you. You want it to be natural and fun. So listen to them. Engage with their eagerness and adjust your expectations accordingly. Next, if the group is on board, have them develop some written background stories or history about their character, general personality traits, if they haven't already. I mean, not everyone has to write a multi-page backstory. You just have to have like a, like a half page or one page history that kind of helps them become more invested in their character, if anything. It aids them in finding elements of their history and inform their own personality traits, impulses, and general reactions to elements they may encounter throughout the campaign. It's a useful tool for everyone involved. You can even award bonus experience, or some other small reward if you feel inclined, if you need just a little push to finish it. Which you will, because we're all human beings who are busy and lazy. I'm very lazy. Some systems, like 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons, have a whole section of the source book on character personalities and backgrounds. That can be great guides to fleshing out a character's personality. Or just rolling forward if you just don't give a shit. Now, get comfortable enough with your early NPCs and their dialogue points to try and engage players with a lot of eye contact and direct gestures. Do not read the entire encounter off the page, because they'll disengage immediately and not really be willing to meet you on a level that you're not willing to meet them. When you begin your in-game foray into upping the RP with your players, you really need to speak to them as the NPCs in the same nature that you wish them to RP in return. Make direct eye contact with whichever party member or members are leading that encounter. Lean in and gesture, or point to them when asking a question of their character. Let them know that they are in the moment, and this is their moment to see. When a player begins to describe the gist of their response instead of in character, gently remind them to try and respond in character. Like, great, how would Dermans ask that question to me, the jailer? Or, sure, and as those angry thoughts fill her mind, how would Layla express that verbally? Now players, sometimes a different or silly voice can help. Textures, speaking in a lighter place on your palate, or just something that's a little different than your normal speaking voice. Fun voices and accents are by no means necessary for the game, but they can help you, as well as your fellow players and GM, separate your in-character dialogue from your own thoughts and comments in the game. Physicality helps too. Think of how different your character would hold themselves compared to you. Would they sit up straight, broaden their shoulders, or curl up and act like a crazy person? Maybe they give giant bombastic gestures. You know, you may find yourself physically embodying your character in RP moments more often once you think on these little details. For all you GMs, you need to be patient. For some players, it's a really big step in letting go of their own insecurities and embracing the play that makes these games so wonderful. Don't expect a huge, sudden change. It may just take a while, sometimes a very long while, if at all. Be supportive. Compliment players after a session for good role-playing, and don't scold them for any missed moments or opportunities during the session. Players, also be supportive to your other players and willing to elevate your less comfortable players. Let them have the spotlight. Pay attention to them when they're speaking and back up their statements with your own in-character moments. Indeed, or exactly, Layla, if they make a good point in RP. And most of all, have fun. Even just the slightest shift in this direction can lead to some of the most immersive RP experiences. But you have to make sure that all these experiences are still fun for everyone involved. That's the key to the game, and that's the key to really making your players want to engage more on a role-playing level. Anyway, I hope these tips have been useful to you at all. Uh, you can find more GM tips here at geekandsundry.com. I look forward to seeing you somewhere on the internet in the near future.